was asking uh, Coach Altman about you know the smaller lineup you guys have used it at, at times this year. Um, what, what does it change for your responsibilities when you guys go to that small lineup and you're, I guess, essentially the center? Um, we have to rebound a lot better than before with me, Dre, JT. We're you know big wings, but you know, the bigger guys out there, we just gotta crash the words a little bit harder than before. And how do you feel it, it works to your advantage? And it's, it's obvious it's more difficult for big guys to guard smaller guys, but then it flips when you're on the other end of the floor. But, but why does it work well for your, for your group? Uh, we can guard, I think me, well specifically me, JT and Andre can guard three, fours, and fives. And, you know, Musa or Otaka is in the game, we know we need to help them a little bit more. But all five guys out there are pretty versatile on defense and on offense. It's like you said, it's hard for bigger guys to guard, you know, me, JT, and Dre on the perimeter. And then um, the performance that Andre had guarding Haas was Giving up like eight inches, the guard him. Um, just, I mean, how remarkable was that for you to, to see him do that, or did you expect it? <laughs> I did expect it because he, he does that a lot. He's a lot stronger than he looks. Um, he's just got heart. Like, he doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter who he's guarding. He's not just going to let him and let a guy score, and that's what we love about him. Yeah, we asked Coach about this, but when you play a team a second time around, maybe for you, does it make it easier, more difficult in preparation? Um, and for, for you individually, does it make it, is it easier, harder? I think you play a team twice, you kind of know each other a little bit better. So the pressure of preparation is pretty much the same because they haven't changed their you know, playing style. But in the game, everybody knows what you're going to do. So you have to adapt on the fly. Bill asked about Andre, but Musa also had a pretty big game for you guys the other night. What was it like for you to see him finally kind of have a game like that after he had struggled, at least on the offensive end? It was a long time coming. You know, It doesn't matter if you, I don't know how many games he didn't score in a row, but we had faith that he's going to knock those shots down eventually. And it came in, you know, the biggest game of the year. Coach said that Iowa's a much different team, and, and so were you. In, in what ways do you think you guys are a lot different than the first time you played Iowa? Um, that was, you know, nine or I mean, big ten games ago. We've had a lot of growth since then, offensively and defensively. Um, you know, and that was a long time ago. We were two totally different teams, but <clears throat> like I said, they're a better team than they were then, and so are we. You guys have been through some emotional wins this year, Michigan State, coming back against Michigan. What's the key to not losing focus on the next game? I know you guys have talked one game at a time, but sometimes that can carry over into a game, and, and maybe you start slow or, or whatnot. How do you keep focus on Iowa and put Purdue behind you? I think that's on the older guys, me, JT, Dockage, to kind of calm everybody down. Like, hey, you know, we, we beat Purdue, and that's all good and well, but this still, still was just one game, and you know, Iowa's our main focus right now, no matter what else happens. Coach Holman was talking about, you know, you need a good start. And obviously, offensively, you guys came out a little slow against Purdue, you know, Penn State, and, and there's been a few of those this year. What, and we've asked this before, but is there something you can point to that, that maybe is an indicator of why those are happening? I wish I knew why that happens. I wish it didn't happen. But um, I think it's just the best way to do it is repair and you know, be focused on the game. That's the best way to set yourself up for a good start. Is it? At least a little reassuring that you guys, for the most part, have been able to fight back. I mean, even Penn State, you guys came back in that game that you're able to, to be resilient, I guess. Yeah, definitely. That's good for our team to always be resilient because we can't have a perfect start or there's going to be ups and downs in the game and you know, able to fight back at some point. I want to ask you about two of your teammates. First, um, Andrew, uh, we've kind of heard a lot about how he's a good connector of people and how he's very talkative and that helps him. but. When he first got here and a, a guy from Michigan is coming in and trying to take on someone of a leadership role, were you all receptive to that immediately? Or was there any part of you guys were like, who the heck is this guy? <laughs> I was pretty receptive of it because he won a lot of games at Michigan. You know, he saw how their culture was and the things that they did to win. I mean, he went on like an Elite Eight run last year, right? So clearly there was some stuff they were doing right up there. So he brought a, a lot of that down here. And in the games, when we're excited to celebrate, he's always a guy that's like, hey, let's calm down, bring it in, it's for what we need to do next. That, that's been huge for us this year. And then uh, I want to ask about Jay Sean too, and this was probably a bit of a loaded question, but having come in the same year as him and seeing what he's done over his like three and a half years, he's got five regular season games left. Can you sum up at all in your, in your mind what he's been to this team, and, and as a, especially as a leader over the last couple of years? I mean, he's been everything to, to not just this program, but us, the guys in the locker room. He's always been the toughest guy out there, the hardest working guy, no matter what's going right or wrong. And, these last four years of just being his roommate and his friend has just been the you know, best four years of my life so far. And to this being his final year, we don't know if it's your final year yet, but it's definitely his final year. To, to be doing this, is there any sense that like he he 
and I know your team, but he deserved to go out with a year like this. No, he, he definitely deserves it because he, you know, the ups and downs he's had the last two or three years, he's always been the, the most consistent guy. I thought, you know, play, play his level of his play, you know, his toughness, his heart, no matter what was going on, he was always going to, you know, give his best effort, and he definitely deserves to go out and good note. Kata, you guys are now in first place in the Big Ten. You guys have beaten two top three teams this season. I mean, there's there's a lot of people that think you guys are Final Four team. There are some people that still think that you're not even the best team in the Big Ten. I mean, do you guys listen to the outside noise? I mean, I, I mean, I think I checked before the game. ESPN gave you guys like a 19 percent chance to win the other night. I mean, do you feel like you guys have been disrespected a little bit for a team that's you know won Penn State crazy bank in three from being undefeated in this league? I mean, we did, I mean. It started in the, in the summer with all the preseason rankings, so we don't we don't play that any mind. We just, I mean, people can say what they want. We'll just keep continuing to beat the teams. They're saying we're, we're not supposed to beat, and you know, whatever happens, happens. But I mean, does that give you guys motivate? I mean, I, I, and no, it's, definitely, it's definitely a good motiv- motivator. Just because I mean, I mean, anybody that talks to us is like, hey, how are, you, how are you guys so good? Why are you guys so good? And then everyone's super surprised about it. But we knew in the locker room that we we, we were going to be a good team. And then I asked Chris about this um, just a few minutes ago. You guys seem like you just have this innate ability to adapt in game to however, you know, I don't think I've seen you guys play small ball like that at all this season. And then it changed up for you in the second half, and you guys ended up beating the number three team in the country. I mean, you guys just seem like you have a lot of different ways to win basketball games and don't have one set identity. I mean, does that? Do you feel like that makes you dangerous here? As you know, you're getting closer to tournament time and have a chance to win a Big Ten regular season title here in the next few weeks. Yeah, definitely. I think it's our chemistry. I mean, whatever lineup we have, like you said, it always feels like we're pretty connected out there, and that's just like I said, the chemistry of our team. It doesn't matter if Kale's the five or I'm the five or Andre's guarding, you know, a seven three guy. We always feel like we have an advantage somewhere, and we'll take advantage of it. Yeah, we're gonna get to talk to Maddie here in a bit about the hand she had in helping her brother. I'm just curious, like, what your relationship might be like with her and your and your, your whole family's relationship with her, I guess, given what she did for you all. Uh, it, 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 it's actually now that it's been, like, a while. It's pretty casual now. I see her pretty much every day. <laughs> so it's like, you know, what's up? What are we doing today? We're we'll retrieving her, whatever. So I mean, it's been good to have her here, honestly. This is kind of like a calming presence. And I, I know you've talked about this with other people before, but to have your brother go through that, um, and to your, your family have that, that scare. How did that change maybe your perspective on things? And has it, how's it, I mean, has it changed you at all as, as a person? Uh, yeah, I think it's definitely gotten me a greater appreciation for not just basketball, but everything in life in general, just because everybody always talks to you about, you know, you're blessed to be able to play this game and all that stuff. But until something happens close to you where it could be taken away from you, you don't fully appreciate it, you don't fully understand it. And probably since then, I've gotten just a greater appreciation for everything. I think you probably heard us talking to Coach Holtman about the potential sellout tomorrow. You've been here four years. You've seen good crowds, bad crowds. Just to see the the attendance boost recently and the kind of response to what you guys have done and potentially the sellout tomorrow. What does that mean for you guys, you know, as a as a team and what you've got? I mean, that means we're, we're we're a good team. That's what that means. Like you said, we have good crowds and bad crowds. And bad crowds usually mean not a good team. Good crowds mean you're playing a good team or you are a good team. I think at this point. We can say we're a good team. We're doing what we're supposed to be doing. As a fellow veteran, um, obviously you didn't have Cam for the win against Purdue. Did you involve him at all as a team when you guys got back and kind of the celebration? And how have you talked to him? And what's his kind of overall mood as he's missed these last couple of games? Yeah, we got back super late, so like we didn't do anything that night, obviously. But you know, the next day, we all talked about it. And we're happy and celebrating about it. But you know, we can't wait to get.